Hi, I'm Mark Manis, Director of Instruction at the Golf Center at the Highlands. I'm here today with Mike Viviano with Well Putt and Our Golf Putters, uh, and particularly Our Golf Putters today. Uh, we, we have some training aids though, and, and in particular, Mike's been a putter fitter for a long time, putter instructor, I would say. Um, it's my belief as well that you don't give a putting lesson without fitting a putter and you don't do a putter fitting without working on the stroke. So as we go about this process of talking about the Argolf putters, we're also going to be talking a little bit about how to fit them. And the well putt system is really a great way to do it. Welling putt does a great job. Tell me a little bit about the putters. Well, first of all, I totally agree with you on um, incorporating fitting a putter into having a lesson. Um, you have to have good fundamentals, a good solid base, a good putter, good instruction, good coaching, and you will become a better putter. So, so Mike, really the question is what makes our golf putters different? Well, our golf putters are 100% machined, like okay. a lot of companies. Um, our machining is very detailed. The materials we use are in the purest form. Mm -hmm. We use a 304 stainless steel. Our aluminum is a uh, high-grade aerospace aluminum. Um, when you use these better materials, you get cleaner cuts, nicer feels. So our putters look the same. Everyone will look the same. Everyone will feel the same. Oh, marvelous. No use of inserts in no putters. Inserts. I did not notice an insert in any of the putters. Uh, we've gone to so many of the polymers over the years because of how hard some of the golf balls have become. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the insert. So it, it's very nice to see someone looking at it and milling a face. Um, precision milling. You tell me. I see grooves in a putter. I don't see grooves in a putter. Why should we have grooves in the putter? Well, I think a, a lot of times companies put some grooves into putters where they didn't have the right loft. I am a true believer where if you are fit properly, where you have your length, your lie, um, you have the club where it's supposed to be at impact, and you have the right loft on the putter, mm -hmm. the ball's going to get rolling properly. Okay. Um, when you have some grooves, maybe uh, that particular putter didn't fit the person where the grooves catch the sure. ball and, and, and it help in aiding that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, um, you know, once again, if you go through the process, you get everything where it's supposed to be, a solid putter mm -hmm. is the best way to go. I love that thinking. So we want to talk about putter fitting because this really is, this is a fitting product. I, I love the idea. Most people walk into a store and every putter on the rack is 35 inches long and they walk out with a putter that's ill fit. I can't tell you the number of times I've done a clinic with ladies where they've got their husband's old 35 inch putter mm -hmm. and they can no more get their eyes anywhere near over the line than they can fly to the moon. So we wind up inside chopping off a putter. Probably doesn't feel right now. The weight's wrong. Tell me where you start in the fitting process. Well, first thing I, I ask the, 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 the consumer or the student, do you want to become a better putter? Okay. Usually they say yes. From there, we get into looking at them at a dress, how they're putting, where, how they stand, and have them hit a couple of putts to see what's going on. Most people in th that I've worked with, I've always found their putters are too long. When the putter's too long, their arms get bent, the ball gets too far out away from them. Now, all of a sudden, they don't know what they're doing. Um, and and it, it's true. The, you go through a fitting, you get your driver, you spend an hour there. You go through your irons, you, the, there's another hour there. So by the time the pr student's done, he's ready to get out of Dodge. He goes, picks out a putter. He doesn't care what it is, and off he goes. The putter fitting is equally as important as the driver fitting. Now, do we need to spend an hour? Probably not quite that much time, mm -hmm. but by having the simple fundamentals of, hey, how, w what's your setup? What's your posture? Um, do we have the right length? Do we have the right lie? Then we can look at the arc a little bit. Uh, once we get a couple of simple areas of what this person's doing, then we can say, well, you know what? This putter head style is going to suit you a little better because okay. of how you stroke the ball. Okay. And, and, and once you get that, that puzzle put together, now they're going to work on their stroke, which is it's going to be more efficient, easier sure. for them to do, which should result in making more putts. Excellent. Okay, so, so we go through that. We're going to start that process. 
okay? I'm going to tell you about me. I putted square to square when I was a kid. I know from previous conversation that you think that's a little bit of a myth that we can putt mm -hmm. square to square. I don't necessarily disagree with that. Um, but it was a feeling I had. And so as you're fitting, I noticed that we have the, the welling putt uh, guides here. Uh, one with a what we'll call a conventional arc, one with a, a, a conventional arc to more straight down the line, and then a slight arc, what we'll call the square to square arc, mm -hmm. the one that I should fit into but apparently don't. Um, we, <laughs> so when, when you take somebody out on the putting green, you're telling me you're, you're going to watch them hit a few putts and then say, I think they're a little bit of this or need to be a little bit of this, um, or, or is it I, they are what they are? There's a little bit of both there. I mean, um, if you have a person who has a putter that just does not fit them, mm -hmm. they can be all over the place. Yeah. So that's why it's so important to go back to your fundamentals. Okay, are, do you have the right setup? Mm -hmm. Do you have the right length? Are, you know, simple fundamentals you still have to go off of. Sure. Once you are in that area, they're going to be able to make a stroke. And what that stroke is, is, is going to fit into one of these three variables. That's where I was trying to lead you, because most people, like you said, are ill-fit to begin with, and they walk in with their own putter, and they got to make a few putts for us. And so their eyes are back too far off the lines. They don't aim the putter properly. And now they've got mechanical flaws trying to get the ball online. So once we start the fitting process, do you think it really starts with just getting the length right? Um, l length and setup. Okay. Absolutely, um, okay. because the length dictates how far you are away from the ball. Okay. Are your eyes over the ball? Are, your, are you too over? Are you inside? Um, you know, so the length in your setup is, is your foundation. From there, you know, we, w we also want to make sure the putter's level because mm -hmm. we don't want the toe up, toe down. Um, w once you, you get a ballpark figured there, mm -hmm. then you can get into, okay, here's a, here's a couple of years strokes mm -hmm. which way is the ball going what's it doing how do we how do, you know okay so 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 let's do something here um i like what you're saying so if i'm your student and i walk in here and this is i believe a 35 inch putter and i walk in and i set up we're going to put a ball in one of the arcs we've determined this is my best arc but if i set up and i set up like so where are you looking? Tell me what you're looking at. Well, what I'm looking at is your, your setup. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, I'd say you're probably a little too far away from the ball. Okay. Um, you know, your eyes are over here. I'd like to see them a little bit okay. closer. So I need to get a little closer, a little more over it. Yep. Okay. Uh, your ball position's good. Uh, your arms have a little bit of bend, but not horrible. Okay. Um, and then from there, then I'd, I'd, I'd like to see you, you roll a couple of putts. Okay. Oh, hit one of the weights going back. It's my favorite weight, a little of the inside. So you watch that a couple of times. I'm going to hit two or three putts. And I hit these two or three putts. I, and, and, and this is purely from a professional perspective. I just want to see where you would go. So my eyes now are more over the ball. Ball position's the same. Putter face is square to a target because I'm on this mat, and now I'm just swinging the putter. And that mat, that little weight and I are going to have words. Yeah, you're coming in a little bit. Coming in a little bit. Okay, so you've watched a few of those strokes. You're going to say, and I love these mats for the simple reason that they'll send us in a direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, know, you said the arc will determine somewhat which putter we're going to use. Let's, let's take that a little further. So I'm on this bigger arc, the more conventional arc, as you called it, the Crenshaw arc, like that. What, what putter would that tend to lean you to for me? That would be a, a putter that has a lot of hang. Okay. And what we mean by that is, um, you know, this would be a face balance putter mm -hmm. where the face is perfectly up in the air. This one's going north and south. That would be a good putter for that type of application. The more arc, the more because it's designed want. to rotate. Got it. Got it. 
conventional wisdom says. So, so we start with that, and now we've got length. We know we have an arc. Because we have that arc, we're going to gravitate towards putters that are more, we'll say, heel shafted. Mm -hmm. um, my next question would be, do you fool with the grip much? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Tell me what. Tell me what the offerings are. Grips are are are, are sizes. Sure. Um, I've always felt if you tend to miss to the left, mm -hmm. being a right-handed putter, mm -hmm. maybe sometimes the grip is too small where it causes the hands to rotate too much. Some people who miss to the right where they've gone overboard, where they've gotten a grip too big because sure. there's a trend of. Mm -hmm some really big grips, now all of a sudden they can't get their hands through, which leaves the well, blade open, open and they, they can't release it and they miss right. So that's another part of the fitting process. I mean, you want to fix your misses, but at the same time you don't want to overcorrect. You still want it to be comfortable in your hand where mm -hmm. you have feel and it's allowing you to do everything that you need to do. Okay, so, so that's a part of it. What about aiming devices on the putter? Um, aim is a big question here. The ball goes where the putter face is looking at mm -hmm. impact. That's all it does. Yep. So knowing that to be the case as a teacher, where person aims is a, a big deal. Yep. How, is there a way you test for proper aiming device or? I tell people, I, when I putt, I, I sort of have a, a, a pre-shot routine. I use the logo of the ball. Let's okay. just say I have a, a five footer and it's mm -hmm. straight. We all know it's straight. I use that logo of the ball. I put it down and it's facing my target. Mm -hmm. um, assuming I have that going in the right direction, that's mm -hmm. eliminating a, a big part of it. Now on the putters, we have lines. Some putters don't have lines. That's, it's a personal preference, but I think the lines help the people. So now you have a ball with a logo going at your target. Mm -hmm. You have lines that you can use as an aid okay. with, the, with the logo. So now you're, it's connecting the dots. Sure. There are some putters that have big dots on there mm -hmm. um, that look like balls. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's connecting the dots. Sure. And it's all to make it easier for you. Okay. Um, we have, our blades have two lines on it. They're there to, to help you. Um, yeah, that, that was kind of a curiosity. I noticed every putter has two lines. Mm -hmm. Why two versus one? Um, one thing I've seen when on that style of putter, the blade style, when you put a single line on the top, mm -hmm. if the lie is, or excuse me, the lie angles off a little, or if your right eye or left eye dominant, mm -hmm. depending, it can throw how you aim the putter a little bit. Okay. Where when you have the two lines behind, mm -hmm. it sort of neutralizes it. I don't know that for a fact, but that's what I've experienced working with some really good Wonderful. players. Not one player has said to me, I've never used a putter with two lines. They've picked it up, they've, they've hit, hit putts with it, and they've liked it. Um, Not their issue. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. I, I was always curious as to why one line or two lines or why the two dots or why. There, there are so many different things, and there are even more. The, there, there's at, more coming yeah. every day. I mean, I've yeah. had... Uh, talk to one putter designer where he has two dots on the top mm -hmm. and you know his theory was right eye left eye dominant wow. and it made sense and mm -hmm. his results were were pretty good so and, and I'll take this a step further so as you look at putters and you're fitting them do you ask about eye dominance I don't because honestly I don't know enough about it fair and, Fair answer. Perfectly honest with you. Fair answer. I, I yeah, like that like because most of us don't. Colored blind, you know, <laughs> do you see green or red or orange or white? I, yeah. I don't know. Fair enough. It, it was a worthwhile question. So the our golf putters, two lines help us aim. Plenty of fitting options as far as length is concerned. Um, we were talking earlier about the concept of bringing putters in uh, to the store, grip off which I think is marvelous, especially if we're talking different grip sizes, we're talking um, you know, different lengths of putters, I'd just as soon not have to pull this grip off. 
I, I know individually these grips are about $30 a piece, so I don't really want to be running one of these to cut somebody's putter down. Uh, not a, a worthwhile process. Uh, putters have become like drivers. They're not the least expensive club in the bag no, anymore. They're, they've gotten expensive. Um, the reason why we come uncut, ungripped, mm -hmm. and, and the grip option we have is we, we've gone to the Lampkin sink. Okay. I like the shape of it. It's got nice, nice uh, contours. The lines are clean. Uh, they go from small to big. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a nice four grip there that can complement, I think, pretty much every putter. If you if you have a customer who wants a super stroke and they've mm -hmm. used it, you, you can add that to that. Sure. Um, the nice thing is by going to the uh, uncut is good for the 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 shot because they don't have to have 30 putters we're a new company we're giving mm -hmm. you a lot of options yes. that you didn't have you know say you just stock 35 inch putters and jim comes in and he needs 36. Mm -hmm. some companies that you might have to order from might be four to six weeks yeah, sure. where with our method you can cut it pretty much anybody could cut yeah. it the, i mean every shaft's pre-measured sure. so there's a there's a marking on there that tells you where you are now all of a sudden he can get a custom putter walk in a half door. an hour yeah walk out the door with it yep that's a marvelous feature so tell me a little bit more about welling putt just a little bit well putt uh com another company based out of france that's really into teaching products sure on putting mm -hmm. um the, ru the rugs come anywhere from 10 feet all the way up to 26 feet. You can put them in a studio. You can put them in your home, apartment, your office. It's great for working on putting. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and their theory is it's, it's helping you with distance control. You know, mm -hmm. we all know the theory. If you can't get to the hole, the yeah. odds of it going in are not very good. Sure. So with their mat, they give you the target, and then they give you the zone where you they want you to have the ball go. Yeah. Um, everything's marked out from 3 feet, 6 feet, 10, all the way up to 26 feet. They have alignment markers on here. So it, it's putting you in the right position. Sure. Um, and, and the greens roll 11 to 12 to yeah. You know, if you were if you were to measure it, so it's not like you're putting on your rug at home. It actually has some speed to it. Yeah. Um, you got a couple of kids. You know, you you could turn it into a game. You know, I, I got to tell you, that's as as I've looked at this and I see all the alignment areas and the different spots to putt from, and even the grid here. You, we can putt the opposite direction and mm -hmm. play a game. I see a potential scoring system here on the side to have some fun with that. There, there are tremendous opportunities. I could see someone playing horse on this, frankly, putting from down there and saying, I'm going for the nine. Did well, you make it in the nine? Oh, you got H. You know, that's the thing. I mean, when you're working with kids, it's all about keeping their sure. attention. You know, whether they're, you know, however you can get them to do something for a half an hour. And, and the nice thing is, is you, you're, you're keeping them competitive. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with having a game and saying, hey, I beat you. Or, you know, you... Let's do it again. Let's see if you, you there know. There are winners and losers yeah. in, in all aspects of life. Golf in particular, there's only one winner each week, as we know, on the tours. So, yeah, there's no question about it. And getting used to the notion that you're playing, and, and for the most part in golf, you're playing against yourself. Even the guys that play on tour realize, they're although they're playing against a field, they're playing against they, themselves. Absolutely. They're trying to better their best all the time. So this is just a great opportunity to develop some of that competitiveness, but also to... Uh, to work on speed. I, I think this is marvelous. More and more of our greens are at that 10, 11 pace. 20 years ago, mm -hmm. when courses were being built, mm -hmm. um, speeds of greens were a lot slower. Uh, yes, they were. We, we have better turf, better fertilizer, better greens. Keep it. Everything today is better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, very rarely do we go somewhere where we're on a green that we say this is not really puttable. Yeah. Everybody has good greens today. Yeah. So if you have something that you can put in a home setting or an office or, or a shop that can simulate that, it's, it's going to give you an advantage. And I th I'm a true believer if you can practice putting 10, 15 minutes a day, mm -hmm. it's better than thinking you're just going to show up at the golf course, put a couple balls down, hit them and go.
Sure. You know, in any in any sport, you have to work at it. And this is allowing you to work at it and work at it smarter. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at the arc to arc max, and like I said, once you go through the process and you, you determine, hey, this sure. is where I'm at, mm -hmm. you take that out and work on it, your stroke will improve. It's going to start repeating itself over and over again. Sure. Agreed. So... So great concept for a way to practice at home because we can't always be outside. I know people up north should be buying these like crazy. Chance to be inside and work on it all winter yeah. and come out and beach buddies right out of the bat. Here when it's 105 degrees outside, great idea to be indoors in the Insane. evening practicing your putting. Yes. So opportunity, good opportunity. I'm going to ask you one last question. You know, w we talked about how to practice, how to become a better putter. Um, the idea of being fit for a putter is all about getting you to the point of being a better putter. You said something about a notion that there, there are certain players that just simply aren't practicing right. And I walk by our putting green all the time and I watch people practice and it's a waste of time. It's a little bit like what we see on a driving range. Most people are exercising, very few people are actually working on something fundamental to make a change in their game to make themselves better. So what should people be practicing? Boy, I say you... Uh, Open-ended question. Uh, did, I, did I startle you with that one? Uh, I got gotcha. you. It's, it's an area that everybody needs to do. I tell people, start with three-footers. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've spent a lot of time with Colin Montgomery, mm -hmm. and every night before he goes home, he puts... a. 100 balls down he has to make a hundred in a row three footers before he that's can beautiful. leave that's beautiful and yeah. it's seven th you know he he told the story he goes mike you know you got to remember i mm -hmm. haven't missed many meals mm -hmm. if i get to night you know 98 99 and i miss i'm starting all over yeah. again and there's been ma many a times where he left the golf course well after dinner yeah. and no. it's it's just start in close start in close yeah, that's marvelous. And then work your way back. That's a good story. I like that. And that rivals kind of Gary Player saying he would not leave the bunker until he'd hold three. There's a thought. Well, I, I appreciate the information. Uh, I certainly appreciate the styling of the putters. Uh, uh, the way they're being manufactured, uh, to me, seems ahead of the game. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to hitting some putts with them. And uh, I look forward to uh, hopefully success for the putting company as well as Welling Putt. Uh, I know I'm enjoying my mat. I've got the 13 footer. Uh, very much like putting on it myself. I'm starting to use it with my students. I just got it recently. Nice. Um, and, uh, and I'm using it from a fitting perspective. I, I think fitting on a putting green is a challenge. So having that to use as a, a, a fitting tool is tremendous. Absolutely. Um, in, you know, the thing with fitting on a putting green is you're not on a level surface. Yeah. And you're not trying to teach a person how to read a green before he can figure out how to stroke a putt. <laughs> uh, you want to keep them in a, call it a controlled environment. You bet. Uh, the nice thing with the rug, you know, if you, if, you know, relatively level yeah. surface, yep. you can do everything you need on, on that rug, you know. You, yeah. you start them with the three footer, the five footer, yeah, and and, and the back. critical putt is 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 that ten footer. Mm -hmm. After that, when you start looking at the tour average after ten feet, they all tend to drop. Yeah. Um, sure, except for Jordan. Except for him. Except for Jordan. <laughs> anyway, so I appreciate your time today. This was very informative. Uh, I look forward to taking some of what you've talked about, putting it into practice. And, Good. and it's and it's been great to be with you today, Mike. Well, Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Absolutely.